Welcome to part five of this ZBrush character creation series. And today we're going to be taking a look at adding the bony landmarks to our mesh. So what we have here is the end result of part four, where we've unified our mesh into a single contiguous set of polygons. And today what I want to do is set something up that is going to allow me to model and uh, get the anatomy on this thing to be a little bit more accurate. To begin with, what we are going to be using is poly painting. So we are going to be drawing on the surface of our model. Now, currently, there is no color on this model. It has poly groups from its creation, but nothing has actually been colored. And if we switch the color here in our default um, UI, you'll see that it is automatically changing color. Now, this is an indication that no color has been applied to the model. If I turn on the colorize button, and I switch the color, you'll now note that it does not switch the color. This is because when you click colorize, it applies a default set of values in color to the model. And those values are a very light gray in color. Now I'm gonna switch over to my paint brush. And the paint brush is gonna allow me to paint on this model. Now, she is by default completely white in color here, which is fine. Now, the way that poly paint works is it's going to be applying uh, color to the vertices. So if I were to make my brush really small and switch my painting color, you can see that I can only click and apply color directly to the vertices themselves. This means <clears throat> that I'm bound in resolution in my paint job by the resolution of my model. So the lower resolution the model is, the lower resolution my paint job is going to be, and I'm not going to be able to get any really fine detail. So I'm going to go into my subdivision levels here, and we are going to subdivide this about three, maybe four times. I really just want to get over a million polys here so that I have something that is going to work um, in terms of being able to draw. So if I click and paint on here now, you can see that we can get some pretty fine detail. And in the end, that's kind of what we're after. Now, this mesh is still got some problems topologically. If we go and look at areas like her forehead here, you can see that there was, for some reason, kind of another set of polygons in the corner of her eye, resulting in what looks like a little bit of a pinch. And I can see the same issue here occurring in her breasts where there are corners in the model which are just not subdividing in the way that they should. And again, that's fine. The only thing I really need to do with this model is get it close enough to the shape of the anatomy that we can go in and start creating the clothing. And so for that, this is going to work quite well. So I'm gonna begin by painting in uh, with black here on this model, some of the bony landmarks, some of the areas on this model where I know bones are going to be touching the surface or just below the surface rather um, on the skin of our model so something like her cheekbone which is the zygomatic arch that's going to do something about like this there's also going to be the line that runs around her temple here i can use alt paint with the opposing color and since I'm only using black and white it'll paint that so this line here is the temporal line which kind of mimics the outer shape of the skull when viewed from the side and when viewed from the front it should be fairly straight I can see that I've got a wobble here we're going to also get a little bit of her brow in here and the bridge of her nose kind of touching the surface also her chin are, is going to be pretty prominent as well as the arc of her jaw and so those are kind of areas here might even want to define the base of her skull a little bit something in here so that's going to kind of help me define where to put some of the anatomy here once i start sculpting and i've already got a fairly decent shape on her face in order to create that geometry but these are these landmarks are going to help me kind of place things a little bit better the next one I want to define is the suprasternal notch, which is the little pit you get in between uh, your clavicles. Speaking of which, we also want to draw in her clavicles. I'm going to go and define the acromion process of the scapula. This is a little rectangle that we get on the very top center of our shoulder. Actually, this should be over a little bit further on her. 
trying to make sure I hit that center point exactly. Somewhere about there. So this is actually the top of your shoulder blade, which is going to arc down here in a moment. <clears throat> this is going to help us define where the clavicle goes, which is going to be this kind of slight S-shaped bone here. Around the back, we can define the spine of the scapula and the medial border of the scapula. So these, again, are going to be very important landmarks for defining the anatomy on her back. Next, we're going to run down the center of her chest to define where her sternum goes. And along with the sternum, we're also going to define the xiphoid process of the sternum little bone protrusion here and then we're going to define her ribs as well at least the bottom of the thoracic arch now seeing as that this is a female character i want to in try and ensure that my thoracic arch has a smaller than 90 degree arch in it around the back of her body we're going to define the seventh cervical vertebra which is going to be defined as this little diamond that we get here. This is again going to help us with the placement of the trapezius muscle. We can go and define the spinal column by clicking along the center of her back here and then drawing a line down like so. And this is actually going to be a series of bony protrusions that touch the surface, um, but I'm going to draw it as a straight line here. I'm going to define the asis, which is the anterior um, superior ilium spine. So this is kind of the front corner of her pelvis. And then in at the back, she's going to have her pieces, the posterior ilium spine here, um, which is the kind of the top rear corner. This is also going to help define um where her sacral triangle is i think i've got this too low we're going to bring this up a little bit here so we're going to define that sacral triangle like this which is going to be a, a pretty flat spot through here and so we'll leave that like that i'm then going to go in and arc between those two and let's go and hide her arms here to help make this work a little bit better so i'm going to go in and arc her pelvis off these two points and kind of creating this one nice smooth flow. And this is helping to define where that pelvis is. And again, we should have somewhere around the, the breadth of one of her hands here, kind of in between the ribs as they kind of arc back up in towards her back. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing that I want to take a look at is uh, let's go down the arms here. And while we're not going to hit everything with the arms, um, there are some places here where we're not going to want to place things. I'm going to find the olecranon of the uh, uh, ulna, which is going to be important. And uh, speaking of the ulna, we're going to go with the malleolus at the bottom of the ulna here. This is also going to help define a line between these two. This line is called the ulnar furrow, and it is a little area on your body where you typically don't have a lot of muscle that covers and so it's kind of another little bony protrusion on our bodies on either side of the olecranon, the olecranon we're going to end up with the lateral and the medial epicondyle of the humerus so inside your arm you're going to have one bone that kind of turns into this shovel shape as it goes down into this area here and and that's what i'm trying to capture is the ends or the either side of that now typically when your arm is perfectly straight you're going to get a perfectly straight line um across the from the lateral the outside to the medial epicondyle like this but since my character's arm has a slight bend to it i'm actually adding a slight triangulation to this and so i'm going and pulling it down so the further down or the further more you extend your arm uh, or flex your arm, you're going to get a, uh, a larger and larger triangle in this area. And so I've got a slight one here to represent the slight bend in her arm. 
Next, we're going to go and define the head of the great trochanter. So inside of where her pelvis is here, which is going to be this kind of shape like this, there is going to be a socket here, a bone that sticks out and then kind of goes and hits the surface here. This is your femur and the uh, the ball and socket of your uh, of your hip. And so I want to get this head of the great trochanter here. This is kind of the bony side of your hip where that's going to touch. If we move down to her knee, we're going to get where her patella is. And so the patella is this kind of shield. Undo that. Is this kind of shield shape that we get in the knee. And then this is going to be flanked on either side. Like this. With the epicondyle of the femur. That one's too high. We're going to bring this down. That's a little bit better. And then we're going to get the head of the tibia over on this side. And again, a little bit of a bony mesh here. And then we can go and draw the tibial furrow, which is going to run down at a slight arc down the front of the leg. Again, this is going to get slightly covered with muscle. We've got a muscle that is going to go right over the top of this thing um, called the anterior tibialis, which is going to go right in front of this. But for now, that is kind of what we want. Uh, and then we're going to get the, um, <clears throat> the lower ends here of both the tibia, which is going to be here, and I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. And we'll remove this lower piece. Yeah, something like that. And then the fibula on the outside. And I'm looking to make sure I get a slight angle between these two in that the fibula is lower down than the tibia. And again, I'm not going to bother with doing any of the, uh, the bony protrusions that we get down here. You know, obviously there's stuff going on in the foot. The same is true of the hand where we're going to get, um, you know, all kinds of uh, metacarpal. Um, bony protrusions going on in the hand as they kind of go along here and what have you. Uh, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave the hands as uh, as they are and just kind of leave this like this. We're not going to end up with uh, with anything here um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the um, back of the legs or in terms of the upper part of the arm. We're mostly covered with muscle there. And so with that done, I now have kind of a working set of landmarks that I can use uh, in order to start placing musculature and, and start sculpting in some of those muscles. So in the next episode, we're going to be using these bony landmarks to start adding some of that musculature. We'll see you then.